Let's uh, talk about um, Angular JS now. Just uh, some introductory. Uh, so what what we've been looking at for for the last couple of days uh, is you know the ability of you know using AJAX as a mechanism for basically updating our our content on demand, right? As opposed as opposed to uh, updating our content every time we load a new page or we load the current page, we can we could notice that uh, you know as I was interacting, I was searching for a different uh, movie, right? And it blew away the old content and it replaced it with new content. Yes, so we could generalize that idea or that that technique uh, to build an entire application out of you know using this idea, right? I mean, we could we could uh, envision um, where we could have links or buttons or tabs that um, uh, that we can, you know, as we click on the various tabs or the various links, um, instead of navigating to other pages, we could dynamically, right, uh, render new content so that it looks like we are navigating to other pages because it has different content, right? But instead, we are behind the scenes using JavaScript, using AJAX to fetch new content, right? Uh, and dynamically re-update the content of our page, right? Uh, so never ever reloading the page, right? Never ever uh, going off and you know throwing away the DOM, right? And just uh, you know uh, the entire DOM of the of, of the document and just reloading it entirely with brand new HTML. Instead, we target portions of the HTML document, or uh, we can target the entire page and says you know it's an, it's you're navigating to another page, right? About or contact or whatnot. Presumably, they the the you know they have to be brand new content, yes. But instead of reloading the entire page, we strategically just load the main content. Well, we don't reload the header, we don't reload the footer, maybe we don't reload the sidebars, perhaps, right? We only reload enough that to reload the you know the the, the main content, perhaps, right? This technique, the gen the the general this general uh, idea, right, is is considered the technique called single page application, right? Single page application, right? Uh, and it's becoming more and more uh, uh, prevalent, right? I mean, if you go to uh, most of Google's uh, uh, websites, right, are becoming you know single page applications, right? If you go to Gmail, um, right, as as you click and and go and whatnot, and you interact with the application, things are being um, dynamically updated without reloading the page, right? Uh, if it makes sense that the the entire content makes no sense, right? And then yeah, it makes it might make sense to reload the entire page, right? Just navigate to a brand new HTML, right? And just reload the entire page, and within that page, then strategically load and update things that you might need here and there, right? But it might be that it's the you know that it's a uh, you know it's it's a um, you know, Google Pages, or, uh, not Pages, uh, you know, Google Docs or, or, or Slides or what is the presentation, right? Those are examples or single page applications, right? Have different views. Uh, you look, you can look at the presentation, you can look at the slides, you can navigate, right? You can do all sorts of things without ever reloading the page, right? And the way they do that is, again, they go off, you know, as, as you're interacting, they go off to the server to, to store the, the state of the application, right? And whenever it synchronizes the it has, has synchronizes the data model local to the browser and a data model in the server in the database, right? It has to maintain every, all the synchronization across all these applications. Now this is this is becoming more and more prevalent because people are demanding, right, that uh, you know the same kind of connectivity, the same kind of um, uh, responsiveness, or the same kind of interaction that I have with desktop application. I am expecting that kind of uh, you know, dynamic interaction. I'm, I'm expecting it also from web applications, right? I mean, why can I do this on a on Outlook, on the desktop, but why can't I do it on Outlook for the web? Why, right? Well, there shouldn't be any difference, right? A and single page applications are allowing us to do this kind of thing. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, so. So uh, there have been many frameworks, JavaScript frameworks that have been coming out that that facilitate uh, this single page application idea, right? Uh, one of the more popular ones out there is uh, Angular JS. Right? So Angular JS, um, is, you know, facilitates, makes it easy, much easier 
to support single page applications, right? Um, it's not only for single page applications, right? It has many, many other features which are, uh, are useful, even in, even in a multi-page application, it's, it's also useful. Um, and and I'd like to introduce it today, okay? All right, so let's, let's create the, the most trivial single-page application, right? Let's see, let's um, let me hide this. Let me go here. Uh, let me create a brand new experiment. Uh, let's say I'll call it okay, the folder, and this is, will be Angular, Angular, JS. I'll just call it Angular. And in here, I am going to create another folder, JS. Uh, I'm going to put in here, JS, the, the the framework in here, right? Uh, again, we can we can download it for everybody. Put it at the top, or we can even link to it using the CDN. But I just want to show you. You know, uh, self-contained, right? Uh, this this uh, one page using the framework all by itself, yes, and and we know other dependencies. Okay, I just want to make sure that you understand what the dependencies are. So in here, we're going to download the framework. Um, let's download it. So to download it, we're going to go to uh, AngularJS.org. Uh, in here, we're going to um, from here, we're going to download the the framework right now it's a 1.3 it's, it's this latest stable uh the latest is um they're still working on that but this is a the, the we'll download the the stable version we'll download and we're gonna download it let's see um i think it's here essentials 5610 experiments angular we'll go js i'll save it right there there we go uh let me go here and refresh and indeed, there it is. Okay, uh, I renamed it that way because I already had one in downloads in the downloads directory. I'm just going to put it like that. Very good. Uh, I'm going to create a, a, a page here. We're going to create a page, and the page is zero uh, zero one. My very first Angular application, a Hello World Angular application. All right. So this is. Hello world, Angular. Okay, all right. And let's close that. Uh, so one of the things that we have to do is load the framework. Let's load the framework, and we'll say we'll say script. Uh, the source is in JS. Oops, no, all right. JS and it's Angular. There it is. All right, we'll close it. There we go. And we'll say here H1, uh, hello world, hello world, angular equation. There we go. All right, let's run this. Um, let's see, where's my application here? Did I have it somewhere? What? Let's run it. All right, there it is. Uh, okay. Um, the way the, the way it's going to work is that um, we uh, we we declare we're going to declare that this is my new ng application. Hello, world app. Okay. Uh, notice what's happening here is that Angular declares right declares brand new attributes right for all. Uh, Elements, okay, and uh, uh, these are called directives, right? And directives have various versions. They, they have it could be its own tag, or it could be as part of a, a, an attribute, or as a class, right? So, so you can you can create your own attributes. You can expand the uh, the Angular uh, attributes to be whatever you want, but it, it creates its own attributes, its own uh, uh, directives through this JavaScript. Right, so this JavaScript parses, takes control of your entire HTML document. It parses it, right, looking for these attributes, right? And once it parses it, it says, oh, okay, I know what you're doing, right? Um, this application, um, we're going to declare our code. We could declare it locally here, 
Uh, but we're going to declare it outside. We're going to declare it in a separate file. I'm going to say, I'm going to have my own application here, app.js. I'll call it, or maybe we should call it, oops, I'll call it um, hello world app.js. These names don't have to match. These names don't have to match. Okay. Um, so let me create there in my JS. I'll create a JavaScript in here. I'll say add a JavaScript file, and I'll call it there it is. Okay. All right. All right. So in here, right, we're going to use the Angular framework. Right? And the way the Angular framework works is that um, it creates um, through modules, reusable modules, right? Just like a class, right? You can instantiate classes as well. Here's uh, modules that can reuse modules. Just like classes can be built on top of classes. Uh, you here we call them modules, right? Uh, modules are maybe a more a more uh, like packages, right? Which you, you can add all sorts of things to, to, to a package. Uh, so uh, we can create my application. So here's my app. And we're going to use the Angular namespace, which is declared by the Angular framework. Uh, and we're going to say, I want a brand new module, right? Which is, this is going to be my base module, right? My, my, my main module, right? And this one does have to match that app that we declared earlier, right? Here, we have hello world app, yes? That name does have to match that name here, meaning that application there maps to here, right? And I can put lots of things in here. I can put controllers, I can put uh, uh, web services, I can that connect to, to uh, that, that allow us to share data, uh, uh, controls that allow you to control event handlers, all sorts of things that we're going to see in a minute, um, allows you to uh, connect to HTTP uh, things out there. Uh, and another thing that allows you to do is uh, uh, load other modules, right? modules that depend on other modules. Right now, we are at the top level. We don't depend on anybody, right? Uh, so we are at the top. There it is. OK, so that's, that's our application. Right? That's our main module application. Then in here, you can declare uh, that um, you want to control various portion of the of the UI, right? Uh, you can say that I want to control this portion of the UI, uh, this div over here. Okay. Well, actually, the HTML doesn't matter. You can leave it wherever you want. Uh, and that uh, in here, whatever. Whatever's in here, I want to be able to control it, right? What what uh, what Angular allows you to do is bind, right? HTML portions of the page with uh, controllers, right? Uh, that are the equivalent to in in C sharp to backend controllers, right? Backend uh, code, right? Um, and and the way you do this is by declaring controller, ng controller and say that this is my controller. You can say, you know, hello world controller. Right, so anything in here, anything within this div, including the div, right, will be controlled by a controller. Right, any data that goes in here will be provided by the controller. Okay? This is uh, also following the MVC design pattern where this is the UI portion. Right? The controller is responsible for providing the data to the UI. It is responsible for fetching the data from the model, right? Uh, and the controller is the glue between these two things, right? It gets the data, right? It massages the data, and then it provides it to the UI, and the UI then renders it, okay? Right? The UI has no idea where the data came from, right? It is a controller who's providing the data, okay? Uh, so here's a controller. Let's create that controller that is going to control this piece of UI, right? And the way we do this is to say the app add, I want to add a controller to the app, to the app, okay? The controller is called what? That's what it's called, right? And what it's going to do, it's going to instantiate, it's going to instantiate, this is a constructor, constructor is going to instantiate this, in, in JavaScript, to create a constructor, uh, you provide a function, okay? 
and then it it it, it calls it, and it, it has you have an instance of that, right? Uh, and in here, uh, this function is going to be invoked, right? Because it's going to be constructor. It's going to be constructor, and it's going to say console dot log hello hello from hello world controller. Okay, I'm going to refresh. Uh, let me look at the inspecting elements. Refresh. Console. Uh, oh, it's it's expecting the map. But notice that it works. You see that hello world app line five printed out hello world controller, which is this console over here. So it, it was instantiated, right? So what happens? The way it works is that Angular parses this. Right? Angular parses this. It says, oh, ng app, all right. So I'm looking for a module called hello world app. It found it. OK, found it. OK, great. It instantiates it. Very good. Uh, then it looks at ng controller and says, oh, OK, I'm going to look for a controller right, in a module. Uh, and it did find it, right? It found it that this module in the, app, in the main module, this main module, there is a controller called hello world controller. There is indeed, right? It maps to this, maps to that. This maps to this, and it instantiates it. And you here, you do whatever you want, right? You can go fetch data from a database, right? You can go and do a, an Ajax call and fetch data, right? And then give it to the, to the UI to render, right? You could do that. Uh, or you can declare event handlers here to handle your know, clicks in the UI, things like that. We'll do it in a second. We'll do that, right? So that's, that's our, our very basic uh, 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 controller. Uh, let's have the controller push data to the UI. Let's have the, U the controller push data to the UI. Uh, the way we do it is that um, in the controller, you can put everything, anything you want here. You can put static content, right? You can put sta static content, right? Like this is static content, right? That's static content. That still works. Uh, this, this is bothering me. It's asking for the map. Let's, let's get the map. Um, we can download the map. Uh, here, uh, 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 from here, you say you click on download. You say additional modules, right? Uh, and it's the map is um, which one is it looking for? Uh, Angular Angular dot min dot js dot map. Angular dot min dot js dot map. I think it's this one, right? So I'm going to save it in the same place. Okay, let's see if it. Okay, it's not it's not bothering me anymore. It's 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 there. Uh, right. So we want to push. So notice that there's content. That content is static content, right? So that any static content, right, uh, right, that I put here. Any static content. Um, Let's uh, go to uh, lotum ipsum. Any static content will will still be there. Uh, so static content just is just uh, as is uh, render as is. Well, the what what becomes uh, um, interesting is dynamic content, which we'll show you in a minute, right? So if I reload my page, you know that's static content, right? Everybody okay? All right. So let's have some dynamic content. So. The way we, how do we did do it with, with jQuery to fed, feed dynamic content? What do we do? We declare some kind of span or some kind of IMG, right? And we give it a class, yes, right? And then what do we do from JavaScript? We, we looked for that class, right? And then we told it, hey, I want to put the HTML content. This is the HTML content that I, that I want to feed in there, yes? So somehow, the JavaScript needs to be aware of the HTML, right? And the connection was through what? Through CSS3 selectors. Yes? Right? Well, but the idea that we were, we were coming up with is that, wait a minute, but those are, those are kind of templates, right? The, what's in the HTML is a template. I'm going to grab that template, and then I'm going to feed various content depending on what the template looks like, right? Well, Angular simplifies that. Angular simplifies it and says, if you want to feed data, if you just want to feed data, just name a placeholder for that data. 
name a placeholder for that data. Hello. Name it. That's the name of the placeholder. Right? This creates a variable. It creates a two-way binding binded variable that is bounded between the UI and the controller. Whatever you do to that hello in the controller happens to the UI. Whatever you do on the UI to that variable happens to the controller, right? So the double binded between these two worlds, right? Very, very similar to how dot .NET binds, right? Uh, IDs that you give names to content, right? Uh, input fields, for instance. Input fields, you can give it an ID, right? And then from, from the back end code, you can then uh, refer to those IDs, right? From the back end code. And whatever you do in the back end gets fed into the UI, right? And whatever you do to the UI gets fed back to the controller. You know, very, very similar, and that's where they copied this idea from. Right? This double binding right, between these two worlds is copied straight from JSPs and ASPs, right? And it says, well, you know, if you could do it on the server side, you could definitely do it on the client side, right? So uh, now notice that I, uh, this, uh, as I was saying earlier, this controller is only responsible, it's only responsible for, for this div, right? I can have other divs in here. I can have other divs here with other contents, right? With other contents. You know, so this could be, you know, other, you know, some other content. And that content is not accessible to the controller. The controller only sees, it's only responsible for that piece, right? So controllers have what is called a scope, right? I am only aware of this piece of the page. I am not aware of anything outside of my scope. That makes sense? So controllers have a scope. It, that scope, it is the way they connect to the UI. So there is a magic variable called the scope variable. And there are magic variables in every framework, right? In JSP, you have what? You have request response, right? Those are all magic variables. Who created them? Who instantiated them? The framework did, right? Same thing in, uh, in, in ASP.NET, right? You have all these magic uh, variables, right? That who created them, right? The, 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 the outside framework creates all these variables. Well, these, these variables right, are created by the framework and they are, they are injected, right? This is using inversion of control, which has also became very, very popular in server side programming. At least in the, in Java, it's very very popular, right? Inversion of control and you know and um, being able to inject um, a, a binding of data into your into your classes, right? Um, anyway, it's using that idea as well. So it's being injected here. So we got scope. So scope is the representation. It is the binding. It is the binding between the controller and the UI. This variable here, hello. It's accessible through the scope, right? If I re if I refresh this, what happened to that hello? What happens to the hello? It's not being rendered. Why is it not being rendered? Because it has no value, right? If there were no Angular JS, it would render as a literal, right? You know, uh, curly bracket, curly bracket, hello. Yes. If there's no control, notice outside. If I have this hello out here. Or, or something else, goodbye. Oh, why is it not rendered? Oh, because it's inside of an app. It's inside of an app, so it's still render. It's still not rendering. It, it, it was looking for a binding for that variable. It didn't find it, so it just replaced it with empty element. Um, let's see. Uh, if I name it something else, will this work? Okay, there it is. Right, it didn't find my application, right? So there was no binding for any application. So it, it comes back as a literal, right? Uh, but because it found, found uh, uh, an application, it says, ah, OK, those variables are bound, right? I, I, you know, you know, it depends how you're going to feed that data in there, right? Who feeds the data for this one? The controller is going to feed data in there. And let's feed it. We're going to say, you can say scope, hello. Right? Where does this hello come from? It was declared here. Right? I can declare it in either place, right? 
if it's declared in the in the in the UI, the 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 controller knows about it, right? And there's two two way binding. So whatever I do it, so if I say um, whatever I do to it here, right? If I say right, hello from Angular JS. There it is. Hello from Angular JS, right? So Angular JS fed the data back in there, right? And the two-way binding is so strong, is so strong, right? That I could create here a user interface. I can say input, right? Input, um, and I can create and say I can bind this input, right, to this variable. I can say ng model. I can say Hello, I am bound, I am saying this input field is bound to this variable. Whatever that variable is, right, I am bound to it, right? So that input field has the value. See the input field has, has that value? And, right, whatever I do to one happens to the other, right? They are bound, right? They are one and the same. Whatever happens to, uh, uh, if the controller changes it, it changes everywhere. If the input field changes it, it changes everywhere, right? It has an, what it's called, is using an observable pattern, a design pattern that says, here's the data model, whenever that, you know, and, and here are observers that are listening for changes to that data model, right? Anybody who's listening to that data model will be notified if the model changes, right? So the input field is a listener, right the the template right our placeholder is a listener the controller is a listener right wherever it changes everybody gets notified okay notice that i did not have to create an event handler for a key like i would have have to in jquery in jquery i would have to create a an event handler right if you click on every key i have to update this and update that and do all sorts of things in jquery this would have been you know, 10, 20 lines of code. Okay, over here is just what? Nothing. Right, here's my template. Here's my input field. Right, it's a declaration. Right, I don't even have to have this. I don't even have to have that. Right? There's no control involved. Right? As I if I if I uh, render, nobody told me what the value was, right? So it starts off as empty, right? The input field doesn't know what the type is. Though the, the 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 variable declaration doesn't know what the value is, so it's blank. Right? That's that's a that's a good assumption. But as I type, I am telling what the data model is, right? So I have all these event handlers listening for changes in the model. However, it's changed. Whether it's an input field who's changing it, or the model might be changing it, right? Wherever it changes, everybody gets notified. Does that make sense? Right. If I have a J, if I have an Ajax now that goes off into a network, and I change it through scope dot hello equal something, it would update here. That makes sense, right? Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this here like that, and I'm gonna just have a break here. Did that 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 makes sense. Um, uh, uh, this this declaring this hello here, um, you know, declares a variable and a data model, right? Now this data model can be you know fairly complex. It doesn't have to be just a plain old string. It could be an entire JSON object, right? Let's play around with that. Actually, this is the that should be zero zero zero. And this will be zero zero one, right? Um, so, for instance, in zero zero one, oh, I lost my mouse. What the? Ah, back. My mouse wasn't working. <laughs> okay, so here's here's a zero zero one. Let's make this a little more uh, um, interesting. Uh, zero, zero, 001. So I could have, you know, instead of hello, right, 
uh, I could have an object, right? I could say in my hello here, I could have what? I could have um, an, an object var uh, employee and have a data model, right? So I could have first uh, Alice last Wonderland, right? Uh, and then, right, I can bind it var, uh, I can, I can send it to the client. I can send it to the client by saying scope dot employee equal employee. I sent it to the UI, right? Right now it's not rendering, obviously. It's not rendering. Let's go to one. Let's, let's refresh. Uh, but I could render it easily by saying I want the employee dot first, right? Using dot notation. It is fully, uh, there it is, the Alice. There it is, right? Uh, let me just have, maybe have it. this as a paragraph. This Alice. Uh, or I can display the last name. Right? First name and last name, right? Um, and I can have maybe uh, an input field. I can also bind it to an input field, right? So I could say, here's an input field uh, that uh, binds to employee employee uh, dot first, right? So so there's Alice, right? And whenever I change Alice, it changes here. So I am I am changing, I am changing the back back end. It's this is all front end, obviously, right? Uh, but from the HTML's point of view, this JavaScript is the back end, right? Right? Uh, I am changing this object, this employee objects dot first, I am changing it. As I type, oops, as I type, uh, employee dot first name is changing. Okay. Uh, what else? Um, I, can, I can have one of the most powerful uh, features is that I can have maybe several employees. So I can have employees, right, where it might be an array of employees. Uh, first, um, this is Bob. Uh, uh, last, um, Dylan, and uh, this would be maybe uh, first, uh, this is uh, Jerry, um, last, uh, Garcia, Garcia, right? And uh, I could have several of these, right? I I'll just leave it there, right? And I'm going to send that to the server, to the client. I can say scope. Uh, dot employees employees right uh, equal employees right so I'm sending that data now this is hard coded data but you could imagine that this data could have been very well come back from who from a server right it could be from this uh, my movie thingy right which we would be some array and we can iterate over that in the client how do we iterate over that using jQuery it was a pain right we had to create a template. Uh, iterate over it, grab the template, empty it out, do, do all sorts of things, right? Over here, it is as simple um, as uh, saying, here's a UL, the template that I want, here's the LI, right? Um, I, I'm going to repeat this, ng repeat. I want to do this over, I want to do this for several employees. So every employee in employees, right? Employees is an array, right? Which was sent to me from the controller. And in here, I just want to display uh, the employees first and the employees last, right? Uh, right? And this could be spans. Actually, let me do that that way. I can say span. Um, here, this will be um, employees dot e dot uh, first. Right and e dot last. Right, this is very very similar to uh, the repeaters in C sharp. Right, uh, that uh, in, in there the repeaters you have table view, you know, grid views that give you uh, a standard table representation, uh, or you just have a plain repeater where you have to provide the template for each item. Right, uh, over here you this is the template. Right, I'm saying right, uh, you know, repeat for every employee in a, for every e in employee. Use this as a template. Just copy and paste this over and over. Clone this, right? Clone this. So 
If I go here, and there it is, the Bob Dylan and Jerry Garcia, right? right. Again, um, these these frameworks, what they're doing is that they're you know they're copying all these ideas from you know server side coding that has you know we we are very well aware of, right? And just reapply those same ideas, but in the front end, right? And it's very easy to change the front end. I can just I, I mean this I can change it from tables. I can change these to table rows, right? I can change these to table datas, right? And I can change the table data, right? And it was a cinch just to change this from li, right, from a table, right? Very, very trivial. See that? All right, I'm gonna leave it here. We'll come back uh, on on uh, on Friday, and we'll you know hook this up to a remote server, okay? And add all sorts of things. All right, thank you.